Before we get to the game, I need to explain something. I have carried a dark memory for many, many years. The time has come to let it out. Long ago, when I was a young child, I saw one of the most terrifying advertisements I had ever seen on the Nickelodeon channel. This story is about as creepypasta as it gets, but I swear I remember seeing it. But for some reason, I can't find any record of this commercial ever existing, nor have I ever seen anyone mention it during any discussion related to the Spongebob episode it was for. That's a little shocking to me, because I'd imagine something like this is hard for anyone to forget. I believe it was on a weekend, but fairly close to the morning hours. I recall sitting in the living room on the couch, just watching TV when I saw it for the first time. It showed a pitch black screen with what appeared to be the light of a flashlight moving in different directions, as if searching for something. In the background, you could faintly make out Spongebob screaming Gary's name. The commercial then cut to a title card that read, Where's Gary? There might have been a narration voice over here, but I can't remember. It then cut to a brief clip of Spongebob crying and muttering Gary's name. As you can imagine, my child self was utterly horrified and had no idea what to think. I barely even comprehended what I had just seen. Now obviously, with an explanation like that, you probably don't believe me. It doesn't even sound like a real advertisement, especially not one for a kid's show. It actually sounds like something you'd see in an incoherent nightmare. So you may be thinking, oh, you just dreamed it and you only think you saw it in real life. While that thought has crossed my mind, I actually remember seeing this commercial twice, if you can believe that. I don't remember my second viewing as well as the first, but I didn't hear Spongebob yelling in the background during my first watch. I might have had the volume down since I had family in the room, but only on my second viewing did I understand what the ad was trying to convey. This was actually an early advertisement for the Spongebob episode, Have You Seen the Snail? Obviously, they didn't end up naming the episode Where's Gary, but that did end up being the name of the song that played during the credits, as well as a sweepstakes that was held to promote the episode. So since I remember seeing it twice, that makes it a little harder for me to acknowledge it as just a dream or something my imaginative mind made up. But this trailer has eluded me so much that I couldn't help but wonder if I really did just envision it. But that was until... I remember seeing this ad for the Spongebob episode, Have You Seen This Snail, where there was this flashlight shining through a black screen with Spongebob faintly screaming Gary's name in the background. When I reviewed the Spongebob Obstacle Odyssey games, I briefly mentioned the commercial as a throwaway reference in my opening spiel. This led to a few commenters claiming to have seen the commercial themselves. This confirmed to me that I did not make it up and other people had seen the advertisement. Now, there is a chance we could all be misremembering. Maybe my reference in the video caused others to misremember it themselves. There have been instances where numerous people will collectively remember something that just never happened. One notable instance of this is often cited from the Spongebob episode, I Was a Teenage Gary. Many people claim to remember a scene where Squidward is injected with snail plasma and transforms into a snail. While this actually did happen in the episode, many of us remember it happening a little differently than it actually did. In the show, after he's injected, it's played for laughs right before cutting to a scene of the main characters singing on a fence as snails. But some of us remember a grotesque transformation scene where we actually saw Squidward transform into a snail. It wasn't played for humor or anything, it was actually really horrifying. The episode first aired at night too, which made it even scarier. Those who remember seeing this claim it must have been too scary for children, so the producers cut it in future airings. Eventually, someone posted a recording they made of the episode's first airing, which didn't actually show the scene. Still, it's kind of interesting that so many people remember seeing it and having their own reaction to it. You want to know a fun piece of trivia? I happen to be one of them. I do actually remember a scene where Squidward transformed while screaming his head off. I was so horrified that I never wanted to see this episode again. From that point onward, I would always change the channel whenever I was a Teenage Gary would start playing. Did I imagine being super scared of the episode too? But for a less frightening story, another instance of this that haunts me is the game SpongeBob SquarePants Typing. I swear on my life I remember it being called SpongeBob Teaches Typing. I've called it that for as long as I've known about its existence. I didn't even know the Mario typing game was called Mario Teaches Typing until my early teens, so there's no way I could have confused them. To be completely honest, this one's silly, but it's still interesting to note. For a goofy children's show, Spongebob sure has a lot of scary phenomena behind it. Do you ever feel really sad watching the end credits? Yeah, it's eerie. But going back to Have You Seen the Snail, there is a chance that I'm greatly misremembering the commercial. 
Maybe there was more to it that I'm drawing a blank on. Maybe I mentally isolated the more frightening parts of it. As long as the ad remains lost, my memory of it is all I have. But that aside, the episode itself had some scary instances of its own. The plot involved Gary running away after Spongebob became addicted to a paddleball game and forgot to feed him. Spongebob was doing the Dirty Bubble Challenge, where he had to hit the paddle some ludicrous number of times in a row. And he did it all before live streaming was a thing. Imagine someone doing something like that just for the fun of it and no recognition. So Spongebob spent the episode looking for Gary while Gary moved in with this old lady who mistook him for another snail. In the original plot, she was trying to fatten him up so she could eat him. In the actual episode, her intentions were left ambiguous. It could be inferred she just overfed her previous snails until they got too unhealthy and died. But this episode was a really big deal when it first came out. Nickelodeon put so much marketing into it and everyone was talking about it. So it isn't surprising that at least some pieces of media from it were lost. There was just so much. But my personal stories with this episode don't end there. It just so happened that the night it was going to air, I happened to be staying over at a friend's house. Obviously, as someone who may have prioritized Spongebob over social interaction, this was disheartening for me. So someone I knew agreed to record the episode for me so I could watch it rather than wait for it to air again. It's a good thing they did, because people were already talking about it extensively at school by the time I got the VHS. It was recorded over the movie Tommy Boy, so I'll never forget the memory of my sister putting it in one time and thinking we were going to watch Tommy Boy only for Spongebob to show up on the TV. But before I got the tape, I managed to play a game on the Nickelodeon website that was made to promote the episode. This game was called Trail of the Snail by Sarbakken, one of our favorite Spongebob companies. Oddly enough, it came out before the episode actually aired. Thankfully, it was different enough to the point where it didn't really spoil anything, but at the same time, it included key elements from the episode, so it wasn't too different either. It was a lot more like the actual episode than the Clash of Triton games. At the title screen, we get some really catchy music. This tune has stuck in the back of my mind for years. Sarbakken games usually had some decent soundtracks. Also, the snail font reminds me of Blue's Clues. Are we going to find paw prints that'll lead us to Gary? So like in the episode, Spongebob uses a paddle ball throughout the game. The paddle ball is what started the whole thing, so I applaud them for making use of it. The game follows the plot of the episode. Spongebob got addicted to the dirty bubble challenge and neglected Gary to the point where the snail ran away. Now he has to go around town to look for him. How does he do it? By hitting people with the paddle ball. I mean, what else would you do in that situation? You move across this map of Bikini Bottom on notebook paper and go to different locations to ask your friends about Gary. You start with Patrick's Rock, but he has family over for a party. Are these anchovies in Patrick's family too? Must be extended. You have to absolutely ruin his family reunion by hitting every pair of the same person to get rid of them. You have a very short time limit represented by Gary Shell in the corner, and although it seems easy in concept, it gets more challenging when the hook gets involved. Every stage, this hook will come down and snag one of the fish, meaning you can't match their pair. To solve this issue, you have to click this star that dances across the screen, which can be easier said than done. But then you can destroy someone instantaneously regardless if they have a partner or not. This fish will also point out a pair to you if you hit it, but it takes up too much time and isn't worth going after. You can also hit the hook, but it's very difficult and a lot of the time it just doesn't work for me. I can't tell how precise you have to be to make the hook go away. Also, apparently Patrick is related to the Beatles. So after you clear a stage, you get a quick bonus round where you click Bubbles and Pufferfish for bonus points. Careful, Spongebob. You're bursting Mrs. Puff's relatives. She already lost her husband, jeez. So once Patrick is the only member of his family left alive, he begs you and your bloodstained paddle ball for mercy and asks you to go after Squidward instead. As it turns out, Squidward has a bunch of guests over and you need to repeat the process. The game gets harder as you go, and this is where the difficulty may first become apparent. Bye. But here's the downside. If you lose one match, you have to start all over again. Medium mode is essentially hard mode, and hard mode is the accumulation of everything I fear all at once. So moving on, Squidward sends you to Mr. Krabs, who then sends you to Sandy. Wow, Sandy's house sure looks different from how I remember it. 
This is the part of the game where the characters are only slightly different shades, so it's starting to get even harder. If you accidentally hit the person you're trying to talk to, you have to start the stage over. That's a lot better than having to start from the beginning, though. I guess if you're running out of time, you could just hit them intentionally to get another shot. So Sandy sends you to the chum bucket, and you just so happen to show up the one time Plankton actually has customers. Rather than just showing them the food, you scare them off by hitting them with your paddle. You know, SpongeBob really is a menace to society. He's so upset about losing his pet that he's unleashing havoc on the citizens of Bikini Bottom. Was it grief for his own addiction that turned him from sponge to monster? Grace, remind me never to buy a paddle ball. I fear what I may become. Anyway, I love Plankton's quote when you talk to him. If he'd been here, he'd be on the menu. I didn't know Plankton was French. From there, you go to Bum's Alley to find the grouchy snail from the episode. You know, I always thought it was strangely dark when Gary turned that one snail over to be eaten at the end of it. Even with its darkest humor, it was rare to see a joke in Spongebob where a mostly innocent character was thrown in a situation that would end in a gruesome death. Even when characters did die, it was for the sake of a joke and not taken too seriously. This was a little shocking to me. But if you have pity for this one snail, fear not, because a later episode confirmed he somehow made it out. The scary snails can be seen in the background of the season 13 episode, Mandatory Music. I guess the old lady didn't want him. Maybe she just didn't like nachos. Speaking of the old lady, she's who you get sent to next. The old snail refers to her as the Grey Lady, though her official name is Grandma. You have to find her at the craft store by taking out what the game calls her geriatric friends. As this lady would later find out, it's illegal to be too old in Bikini Bottom. I guess this is SpongeBob's way of enforcing the law. But now here's an interesting note. Because the lady is called Grandma, she claims that Gary is at Grandma's house. If we look on the map, the house in question is Grandma Squarepants' house. This is a little confusing. Did the animators hear the final stage would be at Grandma's house and they had the wrong idea? Maybe this was intentional to defy the expectations of those who hadn't seen the episode. What's unique is that in this location, you have to hit the shells of the dead snails from the episode. Occasionally, a snail will pop out of one, so I guess they're just pretending to be dead to save themselves. Also, why are these random fish in Grandma's house? You don't just chill in some random old lady's home. Get out of here. Since all the shells look similar to Gary's, it's easy to hit him on accident, but at least then you get another try. From a story perspective, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, though. If you hit Gary with the paddle ball, you still found Gary. That was the goal, wasn't it? Maybe he's so mad at you for it that he runs away again. But he's got a shell. He has protection. Anyway, once you find Gary, you win. The end screen says, makes life worth living. Not entirely sure what that's referring to, but sure. As far as the game goes, it's alright. Strangely entertaining. Easy mode can be a breeze, but medium and hard modes can get really tough. I wish it didn't start you back at the very beginning whenever you lose. Other than that, it's a cute little game and another Sarbakan classic. Have You Seen This Snail was undoubtedly a big episode that many people fondly remember. While I may have some unique memories attached to it, I still enjoy looking back and reliving how much fun it was to see a new Spongebob episode. Memories like those can never be replaced, even if we can question certain aspects of them. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.